Yeah. Start your engines, just like the beginning of a race. Another day of golf carts and side by sides. We got to get one of these before they sell out. This is non pre reserved, this is pre reserved. Six, seven, seven. We got here before open because we want to make sure we get a golf cart. It's going to be busier today. Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm at the Half Century of Progress Show in Rantoul, Illinois. Day two, Friday. And the big news today is we got a golf cart and we're able to reserve it for Saturday. There was quite a line, but we're happy that we don't have the stress of wondering how we're going to get around today and tomorrow. That's back onto the main runway. This morning we're going to start right here. What we have here, and I haven't counted them, but they say there's 100 international tractors here spanning from 1923 to 2023 one of each year so i thought this would be a great opportunity to go through the generations of farm all generation by generation we'll start with what came just before the farm all and then ran at the same time as farm all and that's these the 1020s and the 1530s mccormick deering they were actually in competition with the first farm alls and there was a lot of discussion within the company of whether to push marketing wise these tractors or this new thing they came out with that looked completely different than most anything that was being produced in those days and this is the first farm all the farm all regular first farm all patents in 1923 first production models in early 1924 and it was revolutionary. I mean, it's a tractor that could do anything. You could hitch up to the drawbar, it had PTO, you could cultivate with it. And that was the big thing back in the day, is visibility for cultivating. An operator up high, kind of thin body so you could see around it, steers real tight. And this is very cool. This is a steering shifter here. So when you steer the wheel, this lever turns and it runs back to the brakes and automatically brakes one side or the other. So when you're cultivating, if you turn the wheel hard, you can spin the tractor right around on itself. Lots of innovations. Moving through the years here, we're going through more regulars during regular production. Another 1930 we're up to here. Another hallmark of the regular was this open steering gear here, not enclosed. It's all subject to the dust and the dirt and whatever you're working in. Pretty soon the next generation of farm alls came along, the F-Series. We have the F-12 here. I think this started in 34. I'm not exactly sure on the dates. Here's an F-30, an F-14, which the F-12 kind of morphed into. You can tell by the slope steering uh, shaft that this is a 14 and not a 12. And then the F-20. The F-20 is most similar to the farm all regular out of the group, F-12, 14, F-20, F-30. Ways you can immediately tell that it's an F and not a regular is the enclosed steering gear. That's a sure sign. And also, if you look at the rear axle here, it's a different shape than the regular. The regular has kind of a smooth transition here. The Fs have steps. They started adding independent foot brakes, whereas the regulars just had hand brakes and also be actuated by these cables that I talked about earlier. Just general improvement from the regular to the F-Series. I'm trying to make this really condensed. So F-Series is going along. Then we come to the third generation. The A was the first of the letter series. It was released in 1939. And then the H, or the B, and then the H and the M. Radical departure from the F-Series to the letter series. Style. Who? I don't know about that. That's an A though. And an M. By the time the A's, the B's, the H's, and the M's came out, we were converting to rubber more. Steel was still quite prevalent, but we were switching over to rubber kind of gradually. Obviously, everything's enclosed. It's a complete departure from what you had before. Addition of a belly hydraulic pump, electric start on a lot of them, whereas they were quite rare on the F series. More power, always. And starting with the F-12s and F-14s, you had these adjustable rear axles, whereas you had to go through some gymnastics with the F-Series to change the wheel spacing. Here you can just loosen the bolts and slide it out on the keyed axle. Better operator station, 
easier to sit in, you can put your feet down, independent brakes, clutch, gauges right there, gauges right in front of the operator there on the hood. Pretty revolutionary. It's just a fast evolution from 1924 to 1939, span of just 15 years. Later on in production, the C sort of started to take the place of the B, and the C didn't come out until I can't remember the exact year, but it was well after the initial release of the letter series. Oh, we've hit 1950. This was the year that the white demonstrators came out in some of the models, particularly the A's and the C's. Moving ahead in time here, and we've hit the Super Series. Super A, Super W4, which isn't a Farmall. This is a Wheatland version where we've got a lower and a tub frame and a Super HV which is a high clearance tractor. The Supers represented improvement over the original letter tractors. More power, bigger displacement engines, higher compression, faster revolutions or RPMs, better hydraulics. And the 100 series came long after them. 400, W400, 350, 240, 460. You see we're coming up in years here. This is 1958, 460, 1959. Stop here. The hundreds started out as the basic hundreds, 100, 200, 300, 400. Then they went to the 50s, the 50s in each series. And that started to get a little funky with the 30s and the 40s mixed in. But these were basically improvements over the original letter series tractors with different sheet metal, again, increasing power, improving hydraulics, the addition of the torque amplifier, the first power shift system that IH used. We're kind of marching along here toward bigger, better hydraulics, power, drive, etc. And then, big break. 465, 60, 660. The first major departure for International Harvester from the basic F platform, I think, from the basic regular platform. Instead of improvement that they were doing all the way through the 100 series, keeping the basic, same basic powertrain, they got into using six cylinder engines diesels became more prevalent but they missed some things they didn't really redesign from scratch when they started these and that's why they kind of got a bad rap both for the engines that they use in them particularly the diesel and the rear ends that were used in these which were still an improvement or a, a basic m tractor platform brought up to higher horsepower Despite the bad rap that the 560s got in particular, these were good tractors. There were not a lot of problems in the field, but the ones that did have problems got a lot of press. Now as we're going through the 1960s, we got the 504, and then this is a big deal. The 706, and the 806, and the 1206. With the 06s, International Harvester finally took the time to re- imagine what the tractor was from scratch instead of this basic kind of improvement they'd been doing for decades really powerful diesel engines integrated hydraulics through the mcv valve power steering brakes cooling and shifting all in an integrated system true hydraulic or hydrostatic power steering more comfortable operator station different shifting just a complete change from what had come before. Hitching implements evolving to two-point IH fast hitch system, also three-point capable. And the 1206, International Harvester's first tractor that crossed the 100 horsepower threshold. A true monster in its time. Turbo diesel, amazing. After the 06s, it was back to improvement off the 06 platform, and we come to the 56 series, 656, 1256, we're up to 1969, 1970, 544 kind of fits in there, 1026 and 826 filled the gaps in the 56 series, released a few years after the 56 series started, 1026, 826. Whoops, we'll stop here. Late 60s, early 70s, 56 and 26 series together. Improvements over the 06 series. Just more power, always more power. Bigger tractors at the top end of the line. 
more models to choose from to fit into that horsepower category you're trying to match to your farm's needs. Always improvements on the engine, more horsepower as you move up to say from an 806 to an 856. You're also always increasing horsepower, same 1206 to 1256. Improved shifting, going to this high-low reverse stick on this side and then transmission shift lever one through four on this side, torque amplifier on the other side results in 24 forward speeds and eight reverse speeds. And now I'm gonna start moving fast because we're getting out of my wheelhouse. When we get to the 66s and the 86 series, which came after the 56 series, well, you're getting beyond my realm of experience with the international harvesters. But I think that the 66s and the 86s were, again, kind of improvement off the original 06 platform. 1468, 766, 1466, obviously very different grill design. And that's how you really tell the 66s and the 68s. They've got this very different grill design from the 56s and the 06s. 686, 86 Hydro, which was basically a variant that came off of really the original 656 Hydro. 1066, really an iconic tractor, still popular with a lot of the dairy farmers around where I live. Now we're on the other side of the road, starting with the late 70s here and still on the 86 series. And now we are really getting out of my wheelhouse. The Anteaters, the 88 series, love them or hate them. Basically two rear ends attached together so you get four-wheel drive articulated. 3288, 6788, 5488, 7288, and then the big break. In the early 80s, International folded, bought out by Tenneco, merged with Case, and the start of Case IH. I can't tell you about the generations of these tractors because I don't know. Never used them. Don't know anything about their reputation. But we're moving through the 90s by now, I expect, maybe into the 2000s. We're up to 2004 with this Magnum. 2010. Hundred years of Farm Mall, 2023. What a difference from that funny looking little tractor that I started with, the first Farm Mall. I think we all have our ranges, our date ranges we like within the 100 year history. For me, it's anything from the 20s up through the early 70s and there it ends for me. But others, now the Magnums and things like that are getting old enough where they have their own crowd of collectors who remember growing up with those tractors. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour. I'm sure I missed a ton of important information because I'm just going off the top of my head here and trying to make it short. This is really a one-of-a-kind display. I've never seen anything like this each year of Farm All for 100 years. And I'm very thankful to the organizers for doing this. It took a lot of work to find somebody to bring a tractor from every year of production. Have them all lined up here right at the entrance to where you come in. First thing you see, it's amazing. Start your engines. And they're off to the races. What is this? American Muscle, Machines of the 60s that started the muscle tractor revolution. Not this, 
This is a little too early. But I guess this, this is Muscle Tractor Row of all brands. White, Oliver, Minneapolis Moline, Case. Look at the engine block on that. Wow. John Deere. Nasty Ferguson. But a nice display, non-brand specific, just the muscle tractors, late 60s, early 70s. Who knows what this is? LP powered 420. LP tank on the bottom? It's a weed burner. Weed flamer. Nozzles, flame, burn. Alice Chalmers IU. Look at the suspension on the rear wheels. Of course, just solid rubber, but springs. Well, wait a second. They've got a puller here. Oh, you could, the springs, the springs here, so you can run it on the road just on rubber, but when you get in the field, you use this tool to pull out the lugs, and then you've got traction in the field. Brilliant. And this Super A made into a Christmas tree tractor, a Christmas tree farm tractor. Tr Christmas trees pass under the high, high end here, and then you can mow between the rows with this mower. Henry wonders if this is considered a tractor anymore. Are you ready to debate it, Henry? Is it a tractor? Is it not a tractor? Oh, it's a pulling tractor. Allison V12 with supercharger on the front. And it's a gas engine. This cluster here is a whole bunch of heavily modified tractors. I'll show them to you quick. Looks like the same engine as the first V12 Allison gas. Oliver with a Dodge V8. G1000 with... <laughs> I think that's an aftermarket turbocharger. I'm not real sure, but I suspect it is. Is it a Detroit diesel? Minneapolis Moline. Another M, looks like a big block Chevy. Massey Harris. Wait a second. Big block Chevy. Oh, Moroso. I thought it said Mopar on it. I was like, huh? Some assembly required. V12 Continental air-cooled engine with turbocharger on each side. Yep. Ready to star in the next Mad Max movie. There's two, yep, there's two. Here we have a huge display of international tractors and I gather that they're all owned by this farm. Look at this truck! S160 series. An H with a diesel engine in it. And it looks like they did all they could to keep it cool. There's an electric fan in here in front of the radiator. We got another radiator unit under here with an electric fan. It's got to be hard to keep that cool. A56, I'll paint it up. Could it be the devil's tractor? Yes, International did make a 666. Oh, I don't think I want to get in these guys' way. I think they're coming to get me. This guy will save me. A whole line of David Bradleys. That must be an oldie there. Steel wheels on a David Bradley. 
Handyman Garden Tractors, 1939. David Bradley's. I love that flag. That is awesome. This may be in the running for the most unique form of transportation today. Judging by the number of carts parked here near the cornfield, something interesting is about to happen. Well, they're going to combine some corn. Oh. <laughs> they got them lined right up here ready to go. It's kind of funny seeing so many people watching farmers work, but then I realized I think that's the business I'm in. John Deere come through here? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Every one of these machines is interesting because they're all different. Different configurations. The Massey Ferguson. That's all we're going to see for now because i got to go to a viewer meet up here in a few minutes. Yeah, did our buddies believe we saw it? Yeah, really. What? Did our buddies believe that we saw it? <laughs> so, I'm meeting viewers here for a couple hours. And in the background, Max Armstrong is speaking. But we're in the tent here because it's shady. I get a bit of a line and it's great. Left hand shade. Yep. Your name Dan. Dan. Yep. I'm local, I'm not a farmer, but I love your channel. It's one of the high points of my week when you put out new videos. Thank you. We had some cheeseburgers for lunch, and now, <laughs> look at this. A scene you do not see in ordinary life. Everybody's skedaddling down to get a spot to see the parade, and at the same time, all these guys are going out to plow in this field here. like a scene out of golf cart Mad Max. Ah, that guy's from Bullet Town. Ah, ah, there we are. We made it. The parade. It comes all the way down that runway by the flag and then it turns here and comes down through here. Down this runway. There's two runways across here. And then all the way down there and around. This is an interesting contraption. On big rubber. Get a rollover plow. Well, that's not a tractor. Right behind us, <laughs> all the golf carts. Look at them all over there. They're plowing. There's got to be, there's hundreds. One of the many, many D21s here. Somebody said there's 200 of them. And another one. They're plowing over here. They're plowing this field here. And they're plowing over there too.
really chaotic. I don't think I really want to be here. There's people all over the place mixing with trash. Yeah, let's get out of here. What? What is this? Alice Chalmers HD16. What a monster. back heavy I would say. <laughs> to take three guys in the back like that to do that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Carefully that selected. <laughs> so I was just wandering around minding my own business and I ran into this guy. Does anybody recognize him? This is Evan from Country View Acres. Yeah, just a small YouTube channel that watches Pete well, all the time. What are the chances? <laughs> well, maybe maybe it's because I I got a hold of him beforehand. That's that's actually what happened. I I've been wanting to meet Evan and Rebecca is behind the camera actually filming us for a long time, and Evan found out that we were coming out his way and emailed me, and it's great to meet you yes. guys finally. Like. <laughs> I was watching Evan's channel before we were on YouTube, and you were living in a camper in the winter, freezing. Yes, <laughs> trying to keep all the tanks from freezing. We're trying to trying to build our house living in a camper. Yeah, it was a it was a struggle. And so I know I've mentioned it on the channel before, but Country View Acres is one of the channels that I watch in my free time. It's one of the ones I've watched for the longest period of time. Which is Pretty cool. It's pretty cool to meet somebody that you've only seen on a few years. Yeah, and I, I just think that's funny because I've watched Pete for years and years, and uh, I've wanted to meet you, and I watch all his videos. I kind of find it surprising that he watched my videos that long ago. I kind of—that is a shocker, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but I remember when I had discovered his channel, and then I started watching your videos, and uh, yeah, I learned quite a bit from each channel. That's for sure. Thank you. Yeah, he does great tractor work. A lot of good knowledge there. I've got an old Alice Chalmers that's in pieces. I'm bugging him to get it back together. And uh, I've le I learned a lot from Pete, but doing it yourself is still a struggle, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. But he's my go-to for sure for uh, old tractors. Thank you. Well, it was great meeting you, Evan. Yeah, great meeting you. And you got to come to New York. Yeah, if we ever get to New York, we're definitely going to stop by. Great. Ethicus Farmer's Market. We're going to see you. Great. Yep. And I just want to prove that Rebecca's here. <laughs> Plus, you, the light is wrong. I know, it's terrible. There you go. Yeah. Both of them together. Yeah, it was great meeting Pete today here at the farm show. And uh, I think it was like, just by chance, she just happened to be coming up close by. Yeah. And I wasn't going to miss this opportunity. So, I'm glad we got me. Thanks for coming, guys. There are no traffic rules here, by the way. I gotta show you this. I gotta show you this. That is so cool. Is that actually the gas tank up there? It's got a front end off of a C. He wins the award. Best mode of transportation I've seen today. An 830 on steel. I haven't seen very many 830s in my life and I certainly have never seen one on steel. The flag got tangled up so they took it down and they got a whole bunch of volunteers straighten it out before they raise it back up. It is really an icon here. Everywhere you are on the ground, you see that giant flag. It's how you orient yourself. We heard on the loudspeaker that there's free hot air balloon rides. The balloon's on a tether so they take you up and then they bring you down. The kids are going on the balloon. And here they come. You can knock that one off your bucket list, huh? Yeah. That's it for today. We're on our way out. It was a long day. It's 6 o'clock now. We got here at 6.30 in the morning. So, another day down. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.